mentality. Mm -hmm. And so what if when Amen. God said in the last day, and that's where we're living, he would put upon the minds of scientists, whether believers or atheists, the information needed to prove to skeptics. Now we talked about the proof before we started tonight. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I went to Israel with Paul and Jan in 1977, I was just a plain tourist in my mind, <laughs> exceedingly excited. When I got down into Lazarus' tomb, which is two stories underground, a lit by a one little bulb, approximately eight, ten feet square, maybe seven feet high with a round, rounded dome, in a cave which had been cut out so that three people at a time can be allowed in. I found myself there. I didn't expect anything to happen except it was cold and damp. I took a look. Lazarus wasn't there. <laughs> and they said it was Lazarus' tomb. I believe it is. What mm -hmm. happened to me? Suddenly, as I had just said to the two ladies who were with me there, let's return to the surface and go on our trip as we're expected to do. When the light went out, two stories underground, absolute blackness, such as I had never experienced on the surface of the earth, I couldn't tell my hands from anything else. Instantly, during that blackness, the lady screamed. I turned over my shoulder. I can reenact this tonight. I'm now on my hands and knees. I'd fallen there hoping to get to the exit before I'd forgotten where it was. I said, ladies, do not scream. Instead, pray and praise. I'd said two words without realizing it that God listens to instantly. Yes. Yes. Instantly when I said pray and praise, their voices stopped. They were frightened voices. Their presence seemed to be removed from me. For a split second, I felt totally alone in absolute blackness. And then suddenly, the light. Suddenly the tomb filled with a light that would destroy my two eyes were it to happen tonight. It was a light which is typical of God's presence, Jesus' presence in heaven. It is not limited to the spectrum of the solar helium. It's limitless. It's power le powerful. It's that kind of light. I knew instantly because I was bathed in that kind of light that I had to be in the spirit body, else I would have just gone up in flames. Mm -hmm. The power. Mm -hmm. All right. So instantly the Lord, it turned out, was showing me that... He can give you any kind of a body or use either parts of your body. Some of you don't know that one part of you is flesh and another part is spirit, and unless the spirit keeps the flesh alive, it's dead. It's that simple. Yes. So he can use the flesh body for some purposes. He can use the spirit body, which keeps this flesh alive. <clears throat> and he decided suddenly, I was in the spirit body. <laughs> suddenly, I realized that standing beside me was a figure human-like, except so fantastically beautiful that I could not believe with the mind that he gave me at the moment that it could be who I knew it was. <laughs> I was quickly off my hands and knees to look at this person. He was slightly taller than I. At the time, I was about 5'10", and he was about two inches taller, so I looked up. People say, how tall was Jesus? Well, let's give him six foot. <laughs> that way I know that he stood slightly above most of his colleagues in Israel mm -hmm. and the history, secular history tells us that. Mm -hmm. So I looked into a face, a face so magnificent that it cannot be described because there are no adjectives adequate. Absolute divine, absolute judicial, absolute loving, absolutely merciful. A slight almost smile on his face as though he was enjoying this moment to the uttermost instantly put his arm around me, hugged me so tightly with a hug of love that it just seemed to permeate. I knew that there must be something important, obviously, or else this would not be happening. Instantly on my mind now, he began speaking the same as he had five years before when he allowed me to be killed in a fall and find myself instantly in paradise, which is a portion of heaven in case you're listening and don't happen to know. It's one of the compartments up there, Jesus was to explain to me, because heaven is so big it involves something you cannot even imagine as to size. This portion of heaven, which he made 
for those of you who just accept him as Savior. You don't have to be able to be a theologian. You don't have to be able to quote everything in the Bible. You just know that you're not God, and therefore there must be somebody because you're it. You're, you're made. Yes. Just the fact you're... All right. Up in heaven, in paradise portion, he had spoken to me mind to mind. Now he was doing the same routine. He said, my son, I'm going to show you hell. But I said, I don't belong to hell. I'm in your life, your Lamb's book of life. I said, by what authority could you take me to hell even if you wanted? He said, my son, didn't you read my book? <laughs> and he said, in my book I told you that I went there first long before you were born. And I took the keys, the authority of hell and death. Oh, yeah. And I can do for you and with you exactly what I want. I'll give you two minutes in hell and this is the hell that exists in the age of grace I said in the age of grace what happened to the old one he said didn't you read my book I said on the cross it's finished that meant the age of law and the punishment that went with it and all the rest and he said at the moment that the thief asked me to remember him he said I realized that he would be dying in a moment and I told my father that I was giving my spirit up to him and at that moment, he said, I was set free from the physical body, and I produced a paradise for the thief. And he said, now, he said, at the same time, it left Hades with only the hell part that we call Tartarus with the flames. Mm -hmm. He said, because it was now initiating an age of grace, my father had told me that, and that's why I came to earth, I had to form a new place which would be in total isolation from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I said, why in isolation? He said, because that was the desires of their hearts. Mm -hmm. And he said, the only way that you can get into hell, and he said, tell this to people, the only way you can get into hell is by your own volition. I give you a will, and I'll never override it, else I'd make of you a slave and not set you free. True. So he said, the desires of the hearts who will not accept the Lord, me, Jesus said, as Savior, is that we stay out of the way. God the Father, they don't want. They don't want the Son. They don't want this Holy Ghost business, certainly. They say, leave us alone. We'll make it in the world. If there is an afterlife, well, we'll make it there. But never set foot in our property. I'll make my own laws. I'll carry out them, and I'll change them at my will. I'll live the way I want. I'll do what I want. He said, that is the will of these people who ignore and decry the need of even salvation. Mm -hmm. So, he said, I immediately then had to produce both a paradise and a place of total separation. He said, I must take you there. I've already taken you to the paradise. Mm -hmm. I said, but my, my name's in your book of life. He said, yes, and I'll expunge it for the two minutes. You will feel and sense as would a person who had said, we don't want a Jesus, we don't want a Heavenly Father, we don't want a Holy Spirit. Leave us alone. Mm. And I said, but you'll put my name back? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, yes, after two minutes. It was that introduction that I had to the fact that I would be at the moment experiencing the worst that any human being, even an atheist, could imagine. Now, an atheist <laughs> says he doesn't believe in God. Mm. All right? But he has to in order to call himself that, doesn't he? Mm. So subconsciously, <laughs> everybody does. Yeah, all right. Okay. And that is separation from the very person who is in charge of all the universe. I said, Jesus, get it over with as long as you'll put my name back. Instantly, I felt myself falling. Now, not with the speed that you can imagine. This is a speed which is extra corporal, outside the body. Mm -hmm. So fast, and yet I knew I was plunging from the surface of the earth straight down and stopped with a terrific thud at the very center of the earth. I was in a cavity eight feet or seven feet high, maybe, by about four feet square. It was in solid rock, no entrance, no exit. I was in a place of total blackness, total silence and total absence of heat we'll call it absolute zero mm. at the moment Jesus gave me just enough of the five senses for a split second to realize these things the blackness the silence and the absolute coldness 
quickly I spoke to my mind, which was his, and I said, Jesus, you said you'd explain whatever I saw on this trip. He said, yes, my son, you were in a place of total isolation, prepared for Satan and his angels originally, no intention that a man should ever see it. But the absence of God results in no sound, <laughs> no, uh, no heat, and no light. It is so terrible to be devoid of those three things that I would have gone stark raving mad if the love of God hadn't been hmm. at hand. Then he snapped me, or removed from me, the five senses which are normal to the flesh body and gave me the ones which would be normal to the spirit body. You say, what's normal to the spirit body? I can't tell you. A million senses, perhaps. They are limitless. Hmm. And they're unaffected by heat, by cold, by place, by time, by speed. The spirit of both God and of man, which came out of God originally, whether yeah. good or bad by this stage, yeah. has no limitations of those natures. So what I say from here on has to be merely illustrative. Suddenly this cavity in, in the bowels of the earth, so that bears out what the book says about it, mm -hmm was illuminated just with beautiful light which the eyes of the spirit body were seeing. A thousand demons in there. I didn't count them. With the mind I suddenly had in the spirit body, you don't have to count anything, you just know. Hmm. A thousand of them. They were all looking at me from ground level, which is at my feet inside this hole, with little flames behind their eyes. But all inside of this little, little sarcophagus little, little sized... They were only the size of house spiders in order to all fit. I looked into their eyes with the eyes of the spirit body, which you have after you get rid of the flesh ones. They're like microscopes or telescopes. There's nothing that isn't visible to them at either extreme of size. And so I looked at them and into their eyes, and here were flames in the eyes of each of these little spiders. It, they were all looking at me as though just to vent their hate upon anybody that was crazy enough to be there. They said, we got you. And then strings of obscene oaths, which cannot be put into language, thank goodness, they're mm -hmm. native to hell, telling me that I could have been in heaven that very moment because they assumed I just died. Mm -hmm. I could have taken the Lamb of God. But they said, instead, you decided to listen to the lies that we told you on earth, that there wasn't even a hell, let alone a devil, let alone demons, let alone a heaven, and let alone salvation. Just believe yourself. <laughs> and they really laid it on me. I, I couldn't believe it. And the impact of the thousand voices all being heard individually was shattering. I wanted out. I pounded the sides, I stamped the bottom, there was no exit. I'm going to leave all of that now because of time tonight. But suddenly I was snatched out of that pit. Remember, I'm still under the two-minute quota here. Yes, yes. It hasn't turned up yet. And I find myself in front of a piece of furniture that cannot be described, three stories high, appropriately wide, a great white throne. And on that great white throne was a personage whom instantly I recognized as the Almighty, the that person whom... The, the Jews knew was a great creator, a Jehovah, and so forth. Praise God. He was covered with a mist. I looked into that mist, and I realized that I couldn't see his face. I looked into the mist, and I saw that he had a book. And the book came out of this mist in his hand, and he was looking through it. And I knew instantly because Jesus was telling me on my mind, he's looking for your name in our book of life. I looked at the book and sure enough, that was the title. Turning the pages with lightning speed. When he got to the end, he had not found my name. And of course, the two minutes weren't up yet. Hmm. Slammed the book. And then he pointed behind me. I turned to look at what he was pointing and there was a lake of fire. That lake of fire cannot be described as anything less in size and horror than a galaxy of total flame. I knew instantly that it, because Jesus was telling me, this is the lake of fire. I told you about it in my book. Mm -hmm. There was nobody in it. Praise God there's nobody in it yet. The judgment has not happened yet. It's deferred right tonight until mm -hmm. some future mm -hmm. moment. 
but not too long anymore. Because what Hal told us tonight is true. Yeah. Jesus is not satisfied with the political picture of the world, not satisfied with the atheism and all. And he said, I'll come and restore righteousness. I was there looking. Jesus just gave me a moment, and then he allowed me to be back in Lazarus' tomb. The light suddenly came on. The ladies and I departed. It would be five days before I could even tell my wife at that time because the horror of being out of relationship with God, being totally isolated in hell, which exists. I felt it with my feet. I hit it with my hands. It's mm, there. Jesus. And those that don't believe it simply don't want to believe anything. Mm. So that is the impact that I was told later by Jesus to go tell them, tell them, tell them there is a place where those who voluntarily, because mm, yes. nobody can force you, yes. who voluntarily elect that kind of a life after death, they have to do it because then he said, remember in my book I said that the desires of their hearts I will give to my children. Whether they're good desires or bad desires, he has to treat them all alike. So don't tonight go to bed desiring that Jesus didn't exist, <coughs> desiring that God didn't exist, desiring that all of this punishment wouldn't exist, because it does. Yes. It does. That's the message I'd leave with you tonight. Uh, Dr. Evie, your, your life has never been the same since no. that experience, I know. And I know it's difficult every time for you to even relate it. You know, the Bible doesn't even waste a lot of time trying to prove the existence of God. In fact, it wastes no time at all. When Moses asked God, Who shall I tell Pharaoh sent me? God said, just tell him, I am that I am sent you. In another place, the Bible says simply, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Now, you can choose to believe Dr. Eby's testimony tonight or not. It's up to you. You have a free will. And as Dr. Eby's already said, that's one of God's gifts to you. The right to choose. But I can tell you, this medical doctor had this experience, and God in his love and his mercy allowed him to return to you and to me to tell us that there is a place of punishment and torment waiting for all those who reject God. Now, with that information, I simply want to ask you one question. Will you receive the way of escape that God provided for you and for me from that horrid place? I want to tell you, folks, it's getting easier and easier to believe in hell with what's coming out of the scientific journals, this article I've just read you from Finland. And by the way... One of our prayer partners, one of our partners called over there who has relatives and said, absolutely true, this article is all over the newspapers of Europe. It is absolutely true. What can I say? Every night we sit here and we try a different key in the lock of the different hearts out there. What can we say? What testimony can we... What scripture can we read? What song can we sing? What can we do that will convince you to escape from this awful place that has been prepared, as aptly said, not for you or for me, but for the devil and his angels? I want to lead you in a prayer in a minute, but Jan, honey, you've got a little scripture I know you want to share. I have never understood more clearly, Dr. Eby that all of the judgment that we are missing and will totally miss if we grow mm -hmm. up in the rapture. Oh, that's the right. Old Testament had to get on the spot. Mm -hmm. But we can miss it totally and it's being piled up for those that just simply don't turn. You know, so many people make joke mm -hmm. about hell and say things like, well, if all my friends are going there, that's where I want to yeah. go. Or, 
you know, we'll party hard in hell, you know. But, you know, there is a description in Job oh. that I want to read to you. It says, The wicked rebel against the light and are not acquainted with right and good. They are murderers who rise early in the dawn to kill the poor and the needy. At night they are thieves and adulterers waiting for the twilight when no one will see them. They mask their faces so no one will know. They break into houses at night. And it goes on to say who we're talking about. It's those that the judgment is stored up for if they don't go up in the rapture. How quickly they disappear from the day, the face of the earth. Everything they own is cursed. They leave no property for their children. Death consumes sinners as drought and heat consumes snow. Even the sinners own mother shall forget him. Mm. You think that you're doing things just to hurt your parents or hurt somebody. But after the judgment, it says that a sinner's own mother will even forget you existed. No one will remember you anymore. It's not going to do you any good to rebel against anybody for anything. You're going to go to hell on your own and get the punishment on your own and no one will even remember you after you're there. That's what God's Word says. And it goes on to describe it. That's in Job 24, 18. <laughs> Even a sinner's own mother will forget him. Mm. If you go on your own, after it happens, nobody will care but you. And you will live with that through a never, never ending eternity. Just one final thought before we pray. What if there is no hell, no heaven, no God? When this life is all over, we really haven't lost anything or gained anything, have we? But what if I'm right and you're wrong, and there is a God in heaven, and there is a place of reward and blessing, and there is a place just described to us by Dr. Eby, a place called hell. What if? What if I'm right and you're wrong? I have everything to gain and nothing to lose. You have everything to lose and nothing to gain. I want us to pray right now because we can read the word, we can testify, we can preach, we can sing, but only the Holy Spirit. Partners, come on now. Pray with me right now. And let us ask the precious Holy Spirit now to do that precious work that only He can do. Holy Spirit, we ask you now to come and take the word that has been spoken and make it alive, make it live. Holy Spirit, do that that we cannot do. Convict and convince lost humanity that there is a God in heaven, that there is a place of torment, but that there is a way of escape. O oh, Spirit of the living God, we agree right now in Jesus' name that you shall deal with every lost heart yes, under the sound of our voice tonight, and that you will bring them with cords of love to the foot of the cross, where they too may know the joy of sin forgiven. And to you that are hearing me tonight, some of you have never received Christ as Savior. Some of you have known him and wandered far from him. And if you should be called upon tonight to stand before Almighty God, you would have to hear him say, Depart from me, worker of iniquity. I know you not. 
Will you pray this simple prayer with me right now? Come on, everybody, pray it. And if you will pray this and mean it with all your heart, God will give you that greatest gift of all, the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. Say this little prayer out loud. Everybody pray it with me, please. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I'm lost. I need a Savior. I need a Savior. I do believe. I do believe. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is my Savior. He is my Savior. I believe. I believe. His precious blood. His precious blood. Is cleansing me now. Cleansing me now. From every sin. From every sin. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Be my Savior. Now and forever. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that simple little prayer and meant it with all your heart, there is new rejoicing before the very angels of heaven, the scripture says, over even one soul that repents and comes to Christ. Please do the next thing that God's word admonishes, requires all of us to do, and that is to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Tell somebody in the simplest terms. It means simply tell somebody. I have received Christ as my Savior. We love for you to tell us here. If you can get through on the phones. And I see a line or two if you'll call quickly.